Thanks for watching. And I want to pick up on where Mr. Pastor, Mr. Patzer left off. So, uh, Mr. LaFleche, at, on what date did you first reach out to a competitor to ask if they were going to end and when they were going to end the pandemic pay? Uh, the week of May 20th was the first contact. And that was with who? Uh, I called Sarah Davis, I called Michael Medline, and I called one other CEO. And was it, who was the other CEO? Well, uh, Daryl Jones of Save On Foods Out West, a market where we don't compete, by the way. Okay. And you said a second conversation with Sarah Davis. What was the date that that took place? June the 9th. June the 8th, to my understanding, mm -hmm. is when Ms. Davis made the decision to end pandemic pay. Is that correct, Ms. Davis? Yes. Yes, it is. And on June 9th, you speak to Mr. LaFleche, and, and what's the nature of that conversation? He asks you, have you agreed to end pandemic pay? And you say? We haven't decided what we're going to do. Okay, and on June, despite the fact that you had in fact, you had in fact decided? We were still in communications with our union at that time. Okay, and the decision is then made on June 11th in, in, to your employees? That's right. And immediately thereafter you sent an email and by public you mean it was communicated to your employees is that right that's right there's 200,000 of them and Mr. LaFleche after repeatedly requesting from your competitors as to when they were going to end pandemic pay upon learning that pandemic pay was going to be ended by Loblaws on June 13th you quickly made a decision in in, in complete agreement with, with that decision by Loblaws is that right we made our own decision based on the information we had, which included that last piece of information, yes. And Mr. Medline, other than the conversation that you had with Mr. LaFleche in the week of May 20th, did you have any other conversations with competitors? No. And Ms. Davis, you had two conversations with Mr. LaFleche in addition to the courtesy email. I appreciate you letting us know about the courtesy email in your opening remarks, though curious you didn't let us know about these other conversations. Did you have any other conversations with competitors apart from those two with Mr. LaFleche? No, I did not. Was Galen Weston aware that you were having these conversations with your competitors? I think I told him that I, Eric had called me, yes. And, and, that, and did you inform him of the second call as well? Yes, he knew about the second call. Did the board know that each of you was communicating at different points with your competitors? I'm not sure if the board was aware or not. I Mr. think they were. I think the board is aware. Mr. LaFleche? Um, no, I don't think so. I'm, I'm, I may have mentioned it to the board uh, when we uh, extended to June 13th that, that uh, we had information that Loblaws was extending also. But again, it was a decision we made as an executive team. It wasn't a board decision. And were there any other conversations? We know the conversations now as between you. You obviously have employees in senior positions. Was there any communication as between anyone else at your companies between your competitors? And I'll start with Mr. LaFleche. No, nope, not to my knowledge. Ms. Davis? No, nope, not to my knowledge. Mr. Medline? Not to my knowledge, except that um, there's, a, there's an exception here. When I, we had the discussion on May 19th, Eric and I, um, uh, I made sure that we had, and so did Eric, that our general counsel or lawyers were on that call because we were coming to a point where it looked like lockdowns would get, get be over with. And I wanted to be very careful that we were not communicating uh, anything on this um, and that we weren't doing anything wrong. And so when Eric, uh, taught, we talked about safety, then uh, Eric asked me, uh, uh, you know, what's going on Hero Pay, And we decided we would not talk about it. You, you decided with Mr. LaFleche that you wouldn't talk about something that Mr. LaFleche expressly asked you about. Correct. I said we wouldn't talk about it. And right, we okay, did not so. talk And we did not talk about it. Uh, we and and Mr. LaFleche, when Mr. Medline says that to you that I'm not comfortable speaking about this, you think it's then acceptable to have, revisit the conversation with Ms. Davis or were there any red flags for you out of Mr. Medline's uh, conversation? No, there was no red flag. Uh, when, like Mr. Medline just said, he asked for the lawyers to be on the line. I said, sure. And we had the conversation and on the decision to end or not end pandemic pay, I got the answer that they hadn't made a decision and that uh, they were uh, no, they didn't want, didn't want to talk about it further. So they didn't. Ms. Davis, they had not made a decision. Ms. Davis, your courtesy email, did you receive a reply to it? Yes. 
I, I, I trust that you will provide this committee with your email and all correspondence related to it, including all replies. Will you do that for us? Yes, I can do that. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. And uh, with respect to that request for correspondence, please make sure, uh, Ms. Davis, to send that information to the clerk so that it can be forwarded to the uh, members of the committee.